We're back. Welcome back to the sidebar. New series. This one, Book of Pook. Uh, we've had arguments on whether it's Pook or Pook. I'm like, Book of Pook rhymes. That's what I'm going with. End of discussion. First is the introduction. A Pook is a Pook. Then his advice to suffering newbies and the first five lessons that he has for young men. Rejection's better than regret. How to avoid the friend zone. Judge by actions, not by words. Patience is a refined sense of confidence and trust your gut. So if you don't know who he is, he came out of the So Suave forum. So if you don't know, it was an old pickup forum. Actually, the one that Rolo Tomasi was from back in the day before he became, you know, the author that you know today. So this is pre-Rational Mail. This is almost pre-Red Pill. If for no other reason it's added here because, well, I actually kind of enjoy this part. So for most Red Pilled stuff, Whisper has a great post in this, by the way. He talks about subcommunication and that the different types of communication. It's the uh, process communication. There's signal and there's noise. There's text and then there's subtext. However you want to internalize it, that's fine. The first level of conversation is the exact words being used. And that's where a lot of guys who have troubles with relationships, with uh, women in general, or just being social savvy, generally speaking, they tend to understand all the surface level words, but they miss the nuance. They miss the subtext. They miss the body language. They miss what's not being said. And what I like about Pook is that he's kind of addressing it all in the sense of what's not being said. It's all subtext. So in a way, even though he's pre-Red Pill, he's kind of post-Red Pill. Because in order to really understand your stuff, you have to be kind of past the anger stage. Not only are you past the anger phase or anger stage, is that you have to be at the point where you're able to be attractive, able to be less unattractive, and then the stuff starts to make a lot more sense. So diving right into it. Uh, to start off with this quote from the introduction, why he wrote this, uh, the only reason I'm here at So Suave is to help myself. I have absolutely no interest in being an authority or star poster or anything of the such. I just want to correct my own flaws and discover life. I don't care about the DJ Bible. I don't care about any of the forum mechanics, the custodians, or anything of the such. If you guys don't know, the DJ Bible is called the Don Juan Bible. Best I can tell, it's like the equivalent of the sidebar for old pickup artists in the So Suave forums. I, mean, you, I would suggest you go give that a peruse. It's kind of interesting. Like I said, I when I was in my early 20s, I was doing some mystery stuff because I thought it was fun. So I never really got into the So Suave things. Uh, so when he does a post, I basically talk to myself. The post is something I found that helps me, and this is why it appears in the tips section. If I wanted to discuss it, it would go in the discussion section. Many people don't get the distinction and start ranting on my threads and don't understand why I don't respond. There's no need to discuss anything. The posts end up becoming so long because I already put in the questions within the post. And I think this is something that guys are kind of missing. This is the essence of Red Pill, if you want to say that. The core of it. It's guys swapping notes. And this guy here, he's taken a journey, self-discovery, self-improvement, self-actualization, however you want to put it, doesn't really matter. The point is, I'm doing these things, this is what worked for me, and he's kind of doing this self-reflection openly. So other guys can take a look at his notes, apply them in their lives, see if it works, then they add their own contributions. And as you can see here, the, the Pareto principle in full effect. A lot of guys don't want to swap notes. They just want your notes. And if you notice too, a lot of guys don't even want that. They have this weird parasocial relationship where they just want to dissect guys who are doing the work. Understand, what about this? Well, what about that? Well, what about this? Who about this guy? Does he have a right Lamborghini? Does he have this? It's like only become worse since this thing was written in the early, two, early to mid 2000s. It's at the point now where there's serious business branding opportunities around some guy just showing off his lifestyle literally be like me it worked for me it's a demagogue type thing and it's attracting syncophants and in that sense you can automatically tell when somebody is or is not red pill as soon as they start flexing their life as a way to have you respond to them by buying a gumroad course from them uh, following or subscribing them or any of that stuff you realize you're just simping for a guy online and say what you will about simping for girls at least the girl is there in front of you it's much better than simping for A, a dude, and B, a dude you're never going to meet. Moving on. Gender theorists hold that masculinity and femininity are socially imposed. In other words, artificial. I didn't realize they were the source 
but then I did realize something was off sexually in our world, as nice guys seem to be not born but manufactured. So I said, be a man. I want to free sexuality from just intercourse, else the world becomes androgynous and very dull. This is a favorite line in here too. So you can see like Robert Glover's No More Mr. Nice Guy was very influential, not just on Red Pill, but like from the very start, even the old pickup guys kind of caught on to it. But he understands that while everybody keeps saying that masculinity and femininity, femininity are social constructs, he realizes like that's not the case because I'm noticing for most guys who have nice guy behavior, and if you don't know what that is, I've got No More Mr. Nice Guy in the playlist down below. There's also a great book by Robert Glover, the same name, kind of where we got the series from. Go give that one a read. If you haven't gotten past that, you shouldn't be this far ahead anyway, so turn this off, go there, and come back when you're done. But the point is, those nice guy behaviors, those codependent, validation-seeking behaviors, are always trained. They're never instinctive. And so in a sense, the idea of what they would call back then inner game, but what we call now is just your mental point of origin is just understanding your more instinctive, natural proclivity for this, that, or the other thing. And using those as opposed to the stuff that's been beaten inside your head. If you've heard of it, Rollo Tomasi talks about it a lot too. He calls it the Disney fantasy. But it's essentially the role that um, nurture has played in removing what you have as nature. Pook continues, consider this thread. I posted here because they kept talking of Pook psychoanalyzing him, etc., etc., and that pissed me off because I don't know Pook, or they don't know Pook, and I'm the only one who really does. So speed seducers came after me. They said, saying be a man is not enough. We need practical advice. And throughout all this, the secret of the jerk on my computer, which very much dealt with this, got tired of all of this and just posted the article and everybody shut up. Why? Because instead of everybody trying to understand themselves, they try to understand Pook. Pook is this, Pook is that. Puck is puck. What more needs to be said? I love this line, by the way. This whole piece here, because he points out this need that guys have to uh, to find like a dad 2.0 figure. And you can see examples of this still. He was telling you about this stuff in the 2000s. This was before people started uh, standing for Jordan Peterson. This is before guys start following whoever's got the nicest Bentley or Lamborghini or Maserati on Twitter. This is before people started buying gumroad courses and consulting cases from guys who claim to have 1300 notches under their belt. But you see the point? All these guys, instead of looking inward and seeing what they're missing in their life, what they're deficient in, what they want, what their goals are, what their deficiencies are, to take a good hard look in the mirror, instead of doing any of that work, they would instead stand for an internet celebrity. Which is weird. It's kind of like... Uh, Guys following four out of 10 girls only fans accounts. I guess it's the uh, accessibility because nobody's going to be a fan of The Rock because The Rock will never love you back. But this random dude on the internet has a Lamborghini. Mm, could happen. More possible. Again, the whole point of this isn't for you to find a Michael Jordan poster to put on your wall. The whole point about this is to have you get the kind of life that you want, whether it's sex and usually it is at start and then self-actualization. Again, just look back. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You got in order, survival, security, belongingness, esteem, pure esteem, and self-actualization. Red Pill falls squarely under the belongingness one. And that's the thing. If you're following another guy, you're not doing it right because you need to build your own belongingness thing and then build your own pure esteem once you've got that good connection with women, that good connection with men. And then you can start building yourself to the point where you have, I think they call it a reputation, a good one. Give it a shot. You think you'll like it. Uh, preface this next part here. So I just realized he has a lot of references to things. Sometimes they're later in the book. Sometimes they're from the old so suave forms. In this case, he's going to talk about the anti-dump machine. If you've never heard of that, give it a quick look up. It's essentially uh, a way that they would filter out low interest girls from high interest girls. In other words, how to stop wasting your time. If you've ever heard of something called Mode 1 by Alan Roger Curry, He's basically based his whole like system when he was doing pickup on that stuff. So it's kind of interesting if you're into it. Feel free to go down that rabbit hole, but it's not why we're here. He says, anti-dump has a metaphor that I like a lot. You should be free as a bird, flapping around, singing, full of joy with life. Women want to catch the bird and throw it into a cage. In this case, cage equals commitment. Women aren't complicated. 
Our feelings just get in the way of what we want to do rather than what we should do. We want to rub their feet and build statues of them. We should demand respect and only reward them for good behavior. So true passion can only be a believed or can only be achieved when the man is willing to walk away at a moment's notice. After all, if you say, I love you after a coffee date, then the passion is gone because you have shown that you will never walk away. I love this section here. It's kind of like an appeal to the, uh, the nice guy, the average frustrated chump, the codependent validation seeking nice guy. However you want to refer to it doesn't matter, but that's the point. These guys don't realize one of the more attractive qualities about being a man is that you're not caught. Girls want to catch a man. They don't want a caught man. They want a guy with one foot out the door. And it's not a faking thing. Like you can fake it. There's plenty of things out there that do that, like the two thirds rule. For example, if a girl texts you three times, only text her twice back. It's a way of calibrating your engagement based on her engagement. So if she's not invested in you, you don't invest back. Don't waste anybody's time, essentially. That's why coffee dates are bad or good and dinner dates are bad because dinner is supposed to be a reward for good behavior. But guys are treating it like the interview process to even see if there's a romantic option with the girl. Again, stop over investing is the key here. So carrying on. Flowers and gifts should be used as a reward, not as an item to buy her affections. When a woman treats you with indifference, you challenge her. When a woman treats you with disrespect, you punish her by withdrawing your affection and time. When a woman treats you well with respect and affection you want, you reward her. I think the solid line of thought here is that you will get as many girls as you want and keep your relationships bright and fiery. The trick is, do not have desire. See what I was talking about before with uh, subtext? The way he's describing this stuff, it's flowery, it's poetic, it's sure, but that's, it's helping you get into that mindset where you're not overly literal and dare I say autistic when it comes to human relationships, because they're just not that way, men or women. Nobody is socially awkward. That's a new phenomenon, and I would argue it's not so much a medical phenomenon as it is people just don't practice anymore. So a little bit of social skills will go a long way in this day and age because people just don't have them. You can be, you can have it as a superpower. Some guys buy Lamborghinis. Some guys are six foot five linebackers. You, you can talk to somebody and maintain eye contact. It is what it is. Charles Bukowski, Jordan Peterson, Neil Strauss. I like these guys. Add some salt to cover up the bitterness of middle-aged soccer moms and put in the oven for 45 minutes. Optionally, you can take from all this stuff what you want and leave the rest. So now we're on to the 15 lessons for young men. And this first one, rejection is better than regret. He starts with, a young man sat and pondered the next phase of his life it is time, he said, for a girlfriend. Yet this new course in his life seemed both exciting and frightening. But success will not come without much failure, he realized, if only there was a way to avoid the painful trials ahead. No, your heart does, need to be does not need to be shattered to realize its lessons. Does a successful marriage come from a series of failed ones? Of course not. For foresight teaches gently, error teaches brutally. This is why swapping notes is such a good thing. And it's kind of weird. I'm at two minds on this piece of advice. Now we've had about a decade of red pill to kind of reflect on this and act on this. While it is true, if you swap notes with other guys, you'll tend to learn from their mistakes, which is way better than learning from your own. It's way less pain. Having said that, most guys are so ego invested that they have a hard time even understanding there's lessons there to learn they would rather be placated to. And so they kind of need to learn things the hard way. Like you wouldn't believe how many times we've had. Um, I remember my first year here when I was still doing consults, uh, guys would call and they'd give me their sob story and they would ask what I, what should I do with my life? And I'm like, I can't tell you how to live your life. And you give them advice on like, just try and drive them in a direction to see if they're really doing things in their own best interests. And then you find out they just argue with you. And so you realize the guy doesn't want to have any options. He doesn't want to have a better type of life. He doesn't want to live according to whatever values he tells me he wants. What he wants, he wants some guy online, some authority, whatever reason he gives for that guy as an authority, to give him the red-pilled seal of approval to go do what you were gonna do anyway and learn it the hard way. So I would argue, yeah, foresight teaches gently, error teaches brutally, but I don't think guys are able to learn it 
outside of learning it brutally. I think I've told this story before, but uh, in 2018, there was myself, Rolo Tomasi, and Tanner Guzzi. You guys haven't seen them all, great guys. Tanner was asking, he's like, is it possible to teach guys this stuff without uh, having to be zeroed out? If you don't know what that means, being zeroed out is essentially the dissolution of a guy's narcissistic fantasy. That's the happy wife, happy life guy. When his wife decides that she doesn't want to be with him anymore, all the friends take her side. And he essentially gets the entire life that he'd built up and all that equity he built up in his life removed for no reason. Psychologically, it's kind of a big deal. And that's why a lot of um, suicide statistics tend to lean towards those guys around that age bracket of their first divorce. And for these guys, they kind of have to learn brutally because those are the only ones that tend to to pick up what's going on here and move forward with it. Now, I know detractors say that you're preying on naive men or whatever, but it's not that. It's just that's the only time in a guy's life when he's sometimes willing to learn. Partially, it's demographic. You can't tell a guy in his 20s, shit, he doesn't care. He's like, yeah, I got it, old man, don't worry about it. So go learn the hard way. Guy in his 30s, guy in his 40s, guy in his 50s, they're usually more open to it. Okay, this isn't working. I don't have 80 years. I only have 70 years on this earth. Let's see what somebody else did that worked. All well, this works. I'll try it a little bit. And then most things will kind of jive a little bit here, a little bit there. I always say most guys are like 50 to 80% on the way there to understanding this anyway. So once they see stuff that reflects their actual life, and then they see that additional stuff that handles the problems they have, they give it a shot and lo and behold, it works. Here you are right now. Carrying on. So when you find yourself hesitant, always yield to action. If you see her, do not wait, gawk, or wait for a perfect moment. Action, action, action. And he uses the guy's voice here like, Puck, I can't. You see, I'm insecure. I don't have that confidence. I don't know what to do. And this is the part I like. He's like, you're confusing cause and effect. The cause of your hesitant nature is not because of your insecurity. You have not gotten what you wanted, what you've desired, and that's the cause of your hesitant nature. The guy's like, what? You're caught in a vicious cycle. You're hesitant because you're not used to things going your way, and things will never go your way because you remain hesitant. You see that what you want, become hesitant, and the door of opportunity closes. It happens again and again and again. And with each choice towards an action, you reject yourself a little bit more. This is kind of the cycle, and it's not just about women. This is about job opportunities. This is about making friends. This is just about any opportunity. A lot of guys are so worried that things aren't going to go their way, they kind of form a, a form of learned helplessness. If you haven't heard about this, it's a concept. Uh, behavioral humanist kind of came up with a BF Skinner, I believe. Put a bunch of dogs into cages, locked half the cages, unlocked the other half, and they electrocuted them. It's pretty brutal. So the dogs that had an escape would jump out and get away. The dogs that couldn't would scratch against the cage. Eventually they'd give up. And it got to the point that if they'd send a shock through the cage, the dogs would just yelp, but they wouldn't try to escape. That's not the scary part. The scary part is they took those dogs, they opened up the cages, and they ran the test again. And it turns out even when they had an escape, the dogs still didn't escape. They just sat there and absorbed the shocks. That's learned helplessness. You're basically learning to be ineffective because of happenstance or bad luck, or just maybe you are missing some fundamental skills to be able to escape this prison you've created for yourself. And so what a lot of guys do then is then they realize the door's always been open and they just refuse to walk through it. So again, action is always your fault. Here's the part that's kind of interesting. So he says, if there's a choice between less pain or the possibility of more pain, we default to the less pain. In adolescence, Going for a girl and, make, and failing made everybody else laugh at you. Now, whether or not it was true, you thought it was true. And that's how you were kept within the cycle. And the guy's like, well, how do I get out? He goes, by realizing the choice of inaction is more painful than action. Childhood is over. You're a grown adult. You must approach. Always default to action now. Now, for those of us who wasted years in hesitation mode, know that rejection is always better than regret. Always. I like this too because there's no no flowering up the language it's like look you go get shot down it's gonna suck nobody likes getting rejected but I'll tell you right now women hate it a lot more nobody likes getting rejected but the pain you get from inactivity is gonna be way worse over the long term and that's the thing as a child you always escape 
the immediate short-term consequences or something. And inaction never has an immediate consequence. It actually feels pretty good, and that's why guys take it. But Polk argues here that the essence of being a man is to be accepting of that short-term pain because it's way better than the long-term pain that comes later. So it's up to you. You can have the foresight and learn this one gently, or you can have uh, <laughs> the not foresight and learn it the hard way. Lesson two, how to avoid the friend zone. But why, Puck? Why is friendship hopeless? I fall in love with my female friends, do they not do the same? Puck then called up a woman. She appeared in a blaze of fire, probably from the place that all women are from. The idea of this one, it was a guy talking to a girl, becoming friends, then she didn't like him, he got shot down, he wants to know what the hell. And he asked this fictional flame girl, okay woman, pray tell. Why do you not go after your male friends? And the women looked amazed that anybody could ask. It's because they're just friends. But don't they fall in love with you? Yeah, my male friends constantly fall in love with me. And speak truly, madam. What do you and your male friends do? Oh, we hang out and we talk a lot. What do you talk about? Oh, everything and anything. And they fall in love with you? Yes. Ah, okay, Puck said. Now we have our answer. Away with you. And the woman vanished in a fireball. You gotta love how uh, a <laughs> flower he makes this language. It's actually kind of neat because he's doing the... Uh, I can't remember if it was Plato's Republic. I think it was, where he had kind of a conversation here with some fictional guy. Except for Puck is the fictional guy. It's just one of those things. If you appreciate, if you appreciate writing, you can kind of see it and enjoy it. So here's the thing. So why is this happening? Well, why? It's a difference between the sexes, young man. What do you do with your friends? And the guy looks and he goes, well, we play basketball, we ride around town, we play video games. He goes, okay, okay. But do you and your guy friends ever sit around and talk about your feelings and things going on in your life? And the guy looked angry. He's like, hell no. He goes, well, there's your answer. Men don't get together to just talk. We do things. When we're with women, we talk much more. So since we reserve our talking and our sharing of emotions and experiences to our romantic interests, we get confused with our female friends. We begin to get interested in them because of this. And what he's getting here is that girls get together and they talk. Girls love to get together and talk. They jibber jabber all the time. Jabberwocky, I think is the old foggy term for it. Guys get together and they do things. So a guy thinks, well, I don't talk about my feelings to my friends, so I must talk to them to the girls. But that's what the girls do with their friends. So you're signaling you're being a friend. And of course she's gonna treat you like a friend. You've done nothing but act like a friend. Imagine you're playing basketball with one of your buddies and he realizes you had a great layup and he starts to hit on you. Probably be a bit awkward, just saying. So in this case, he's like, don't act like they're friends. That's the easiest way not to get friends on and I just can't put it any simpler than that. Again, he talks very, very early on in the beginning of this book how it's uh, the nice guy behavior. It seemed more learned than instinctive. And in this case, treating women like your friend when you're not their friend, you wanna be their lover, it's kind of one of those things that got beaten into your head. Now, some guys, it's because their mom complained about the dad all the time. They make themselves to a promise keeper, promising I'll never be like that guy. I'll listen to you talk about your feelings. It could just be because the girl runs her mouth to her son. And he's like developmental stages, like three to five years old about his feelings and her feelings and all that stuff. And he assumes that's just how things work. However he gets there, doesn't matter. Just realize it's a bad one. <music> What is this monster, cried the young man. Well, why, said Puck, it's a woman. Mother Nature herself, the nasty sphinx devours all hearts and lives of those who can't answer her riddle. The man in the picture, he figured out the riddle to women. Thus, he became known as Don Juan de Marco. And the answer to the riddle, there is no riddle. Woman is a sphinx with no secret. It is only our minds that we assign her secrets, mysteries, pedestals, and goddess-like status. Puck noticed the young man was confused, so he elaborated. Look at the above example. Look at how the lad got stood up over and over and over again, and he rationalized being stood up. How often is that a lad rationalizes signals to his liking? How often is that a lad offers gifts and treasures as sacrifices to his goddess likeness for his mind, for in his mind, she is a goddess? How often is that lad's overactive imagination converting her disrespect, her shallowness, and her flaws into love? So do we paint the image that we want to see? Exactly. Judge her by her actions and not her words. This is in response to a story they had in here of a guy who keeps trying to have dates with a girl. He sets it up. She flakes on him. 
He sets up another date. She flakes on him again, and he keeps thinking and making excuses for her. Well, maybe she was just busy. Well, maybe this. Well, maybe that. And the point is, women aren't complicated. All you have to do is stop looking with your heart and just start looking with your eyes, judging by their actions and judging by not by their words. In this case, single guy going to flirt, going to have a date. She doesn't show up to the date. Right there, that shows you she's not invested. And if your first instinct is to apologize for that, to make excuses for that, well, that's not your job to do. If she was interested in you and she happened to flake for maybe a good reason, she would most likely call you, let you know, probably set up an alternative date, or at the very least be profusely apologetic. And if nothing else, after all that, show up to the second date. So even if she felt really bad every time, well, people prioritize what they want to prioritize. Again, I think it's Rolo put it that way. A girl will crawl through broken glass for the man she's into. And if it's not you, stop thinking of reasons how it possibly is you, but the fate's getting in the way. Because all this mystery of women is really just your own ego making sure that you know in your heart of hearts you're the best man ever and then conjuring up whatever stupid story you need to believe that against all better sense. Oh, hear me, Don Juan. There are women around and other men hitting on them. What is your reaction? And the Don Juan just shrugged his shoulders and laughed. Well, what, cried the young man? These other guys are going to take his women. How can he be so laid back? Well, he's laid back because he knows he's a great catch and that getting women is easy. He knows that he is the prince. No, but the women are not significant. The focus must be on you. The guys that can get almost any women are not scared or nervous that other guys are hitting on girls. He knows things that the other guys never will. In fact, he might let them have free reign to weed out the desperate and stupid chicks from the smart and the picky ones. As with muscles, it is the strong guys who know they are capable who are quiet and patient. It's the noisy guys who lack the skills. It is the large dogs that are quieter while the small dogs make up for their size with their obnoxious bark. It is the patient ones who control the world and the impatient ones are controlled by it. Great example of jealousy, by the way. Um, I remember in the married red pill, there was this guy, Frenchie, 65, wife was widowed. He was getting back into dating. He actually did have like his purse, his like a uh, high school sweetheart, literally till the day, day they parted was death. So, and I remember guys were talking about the awkwardness of having other guys hitting on their wives, sometimes in front of them. And he always made a laugh about this, about how one time he and his wife had uh, one of their kids' soccer games or volleyball or baseball. I don't remember the sport, but... And she kind of had like a little goofy crush on the on the PT coach. And he just looked over. He noticed that. He just kind of laughed, started making jokes. Imagine what it's like in that smell of the locker room. You know, all the, all the teenage uh, high school balls and basically poked fun at it, showed that like he's not taking it too seriously. And it's, it's a hard to fake signal. So it's something you really have to internalize. You have to understand. And I know we always say you are the prize, but it's not just a mantra you repeat. It has to come through on your actions. And in this case, if your girl is letting other guys hit on her and not doing anything to dissuade them, well, then she likes their validation more than your commitment. So act accordingly. Don't worry about making excuses. If she needs your help, she'll tell you she needs your help. But most of the time, Talk to any guy who's had struggles dating. He will tell you girls are very, very good at not sleeping with the guys they don't want to sleep with. So if she's leading them on, that kind of tells you what you need to know. Or as a fellow moderator of the Married Red Pill, Bogey D6, used to say, hey, if you can get her, I'll throw in the truck for free. <laughs> this was a guy wondering, well, what do I do uh, when I get to the bedroom? How will I know what to do next? And he goes, all right, just trust your gut. Like... How does the kid know how to eat? You know, well, the food's right in front of him. His nose smells it. His eye sees it. He drools. I'm like, okay, same with women. What does the kid do next? Oh, he, he bites He bites into the food. Okay, but how does he know when to do it? Well, his senses all tell him to do so. He knows when to eat because his food's all been prepared. It's been cooked. It's presented before him. His mouth is salivating. Everybody else is eating. You know, but what mechanism tells him that? It looks like his gut. And that's it. Same with women. They have been prepared through decades of aging and growth for this purpose. They dream it, they want it, and oh heavens do they want it. They have been warmed through your fun, through your attention, through your desire, and through your desire they are presented through themselves. Do you think she's wearing what she does for herself? No. She's wearing it for you. Women are not ornaments to be admired, they are there to be consumed. You know it, they know it. 
And he goes, oh, okay, I see. Yeah, nature has a system in place. No philosophy in the world can do you any good. In fact, the philosophies that supposedly work are the ones that best match nature's music. You can either flow with the system and get what you want, or you can buck it in pain. So listen to your gut. And in this case, this is good for a lot of guys who always get these like uh, very specific questions. Well, how do I know if that's an indicator of interest? How do I know if I should go and touch her yet? Like break what they call Kino escalation. How would I know if now's the time to go in for a kiss? And Puck makes the case, it's like, trust your gut. If you have to ask the question, the answer is probably like you're not paying attention to it yet. Now, granted, a lot of old pickup systems used to have like a system in place. The reason I liked it is because it was training wheels for you. Not so much like an actual system, an actual manipulative system. It was just uh, my experiences with the mystery system. There was three phases and each phase had three parts. It was fairly simple. But do your opener. Uh, try to get three indicators of interest. Tell three stories of displays of higher value and... I noticed like as I started dating, like it worked well at first when I didn't know what I was doing. But then after a while, I realized like I was skipping steps and skipping other steps and adding things in and doing things out of order. And it, a lot of the times it was just once you understood the, you know, the rules, the training wheels came off and you just kind of trust your instincts. Like you can tell when a girl is into you after you've talked with enough girls. You can see when you go in for a kiss. You can see when you can go and you know, touch her on the forearm and let you know you've had fun. You can see when she's not interested and you're like, yeah, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. I have a great red pilled coffee video about some girl who had that date and the guy listened to her talk for about an hour and he goes, yeah, um, I'm tired. I'm going to go to bed. Let's call this in like at 830. But that's the point. Get some practice in. Pick a system if you need one. One's the same as the next. It's just like working out. The first time you work out, just about any program you do is going to put on mass. But then once you get that basic level of skill, trust your gut. So on that note, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will catch you next Sunday. And if you're watching these after the fact, don't forget the playlist is down below. You can check out all these episodes in order. And I will catch you guys on the next one.